In this lecture, we will be learning about shape functions for constant strain triangle. The displacement of a point within the element is represented in terms of nodal displacements. The finite element method uses the concept of shape functions in developing these interpolations. So, for a constant strain triangle, the shape functions are linear over the element. The three shape functions n1, n2 and n3 correspond to nodes 1, 2 and 3 respectively. So, shape function n1 is 1 at node 1 and reduces to 0 at nodes 2 and 3. So, similarly n2 will be 1 at node 2 and 0 at nodes 1 and 3. n3 will be 1 at node 3 and 0 at nodes 1 and 2. Any linear combination of the shape function represents a plane surface. The sum of n1, n2, n3 represents a plane uh, at a height of 1 at nodes 1, 2 and 3 which is parallel to the triangle 1, 2, 3. Okay, so uh, uh, the sum of these three shape functions that is n1 plus n2 plus n3 has to be 1 n1, n2, n3 are not linearly independent. Okay, so the first two are independent. So, we can say that n1 we can represent as zeta, n2 we represent as eta. Okay, so these two are linearly independent whereas n3 is dependent on n1 and n2. So, it is 1 minus zeta minus eta. Let us draw this variation. So, we have at node 1, zeta equals to 1 and eta equals to 0. We know that n1 equals to zeta, n2 equals to eta and n3 equals to 1 minus zeta minus eta. So, it will be 1 minus 1 minus 0 which is 0. So, if I have a triangle and uh, I have a triangle which is say something like this with node 1, node 2 and node 3 and I want to draw this variation of n1, n2, n3. We found out just now that n1 is 1. Okay. And n2 and n3 are zeros. So, this is the plane. Okay. So, this is 1, 2, 3. This is of the height 1. This is exactly what I meant when I said that uh, the combination of any uh, of the shape functions or the, the combination of a function, shape functions represents a plane surface. So, this thing that I have hatched here is the plane surface. Similarly, let us calculate or find out at node 2 here zeta will be 0 and eta will be 1. So, we have n1 equals to 0, n2 equals to 1 and n3 equals to 0.
so this is my triangle with nodes 1 2 and 3 the value of the shape function at n2 is 1 and at the other two nodes it is 0 and 0 so joining this I get somewhat like this and this is the plane surface after I add n1, n2, n3. At node 3, zeta is 0, eta is 0. Zeta and eta are natural coordinates. So n1 will be 0, n2 will be 0 and n3 will be 1. So the height at the node 3 is 1 and at the other two nodes it is 0. So this shaded portion here in red represents the plane, the variation of N3. Next we move on to the isoparametric representation. The displacement inside the element is obtained using the shape functions and the nodal values of the unknown displacements. So we have here say a triangle with nodes 1, 2 and 3. These displacements can be represented as Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Q5 and Q6 and if we have this as the X and the Y direction so in the X direction we have three displacements and those are Q1, Q3 and Q5 whereas in the Y direction we have displacements Q2, Q4 and Q6. Now since it's a two-dimensional body we will have displacements in uh, two directions x and y and the displacement in the x direction is represented as u this will be given as n1 q1 plus n2 q3 plus n3 q5 please note that in the x direction the displacement u will have only the displacements which are in the x direction so it is q1 q3 and q5 from this equation next the displacement in y is represented by v and that is equal to n1 q2 plus n2 q4 plus n3 q6 let us call this equation 1 Now let us substitute n1 equals to zeta, n2 equals to eta and n3 equals to 1 minus zeta minus eta. So we have zeta q1 plus eta q3 plus 1 minus zeta minus eta the whole multiplied by q5. And for V, we have zeta into Q2, eta into Q4, 1 minus zeta minus eta Q6. What we can do now is club the terms with zeta together. So we have Q1 minus Q5 into zeta plus q3 minus q5 into eta and the constant q5.
the same thing we repeat for v q2 minus q6 zeta so we take the common terms with regard to zeta and eta equation 1 can be written as u equals to n into q and if we want to write it in the matrix form we can write it as u v equals to n1 0 n2 0 n3 0 0 n1 0 n2 0 n3 multiplied by q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 and q6 so this is a 2 by 6 matrix and this is a vector column vector of 6 by 1 now when we multiply this row by this column we will get equation 1 that is n1 into q1 plus 0 into q2 plus n2 into q3 plus 0 into q4 plus n3 into q5 plus 0 into q6 same thing for v okay so it will be 0 into uh, n1 plus uh, sorry 0 into q1 plus n1 q2 plus 0 into n3 uh, q3 sorry plus n2 q4 0 into q5 plus n3 q6 so this is in the matrix form uh, let me call this equation 2 this is the representation of how we will find displacement within any point in the triangular element so we have a triangle and we want to find out the displacement somewhere here that is within the element we are going to be using this equation the same thing can be done to find out the coordinate so uh, for a triangular element the coordinate x and y can also be represented in terms of the same functions uh, the shape functions that is why these are called as isoparametric that means the same parameters are being used to find out the unknown displacement at a point as well as unknown geometry of the point so if you want to want to find out the geometry of this point p it will be n1 x1 plus n2 x2 plus n3 x3 and y will be n1 y1 plus n2 y2 plus n3 y3 this is node 1 node 2 and node 3 the coordinates of this will be given by x1 y1 x2 y2 and x3 y3 so these uh, coordinates x3 y3 x1 y1 and x2 y2 are to be used in these two equations so this is the use of shape functions uh, to find out the unknown displacement as well as the unknown geometry of a given point within the element thank you